Alright guys, it is Peter or Mask Momentum here and today we are going to go over one of the top 8 matches of the World Championship. Uh, the first one we're going to go over is this Aaron Chance versus Matt W match in the quarters here. Uh, this Dromite versus Dash matchup here. But before we get started, I wanted to talk about the matchup a little bit and the deck list going into it to have a little bit more of a more of an idea what we're looking at, right? Um, especially because these world games are like one by inches more than a large quantity, like more than a mile, like you can get in a lot of these, uh, just like your regular finals of like battle hardens. Uh, I wanted to go over it a, just a bit more for specifically the seven matches, uh, in the, in the top eight of the world championship. So let's take a look at this a little bit here. Uh, something that I'll say, uh, is that. There's quite a few differences of between the the decks that we saw at the World Championship and like what we'll probably see moving forward because of Ice Center getting rotated out it, uh, a week later, right? But when we look at it in this specific matchup, the big thing going into this World Championship that was super super surprising was there was a hell of a lot of Ice Center uh, at this tournament. And the perceived perception of this meta that was Dromai was the best deck in the meta, uh, in this meta going into it, and it turned out into being Icelander being the most represented at the tournament for it to be the answer or what people thought was the best deck for the specific tournament at the time, right? So let's look at uh, what Aaron Chance and the the Canadian crew brought to the table for this event. Uh, there's some pretty interesting choices for this deck list as well. Uh, I know that this was kept under grass for a lot and they really really work on these uh, drummer decks very specifically to what they think will come out of it so pretty pretty impressed with what they have here. Uh, we got like the normal start here they are putting the ghostly touch for the extra wood con versus uh, Bravo this weekend with the wave of reality. They also have silk in form uh, Silicon Form has really impressed me in a lot of ways, but something that you can see is they're not playing actual dedicated arcane barrier, so they've decided just to play a Silicon Form or Wave of Reality, uh, probably the Silicon Form uh, specifically versus the Ice Center matchup in this one, which is pretty interesting because usually you see at least a natural AB1 to give respect to that matchup. And the most interesting is, thing is, is they are playing Mage Master Boots specifically for uh, this weekend. And something that Mage Master Boots allows you to do is that it allows you to play the Passing Mirage and Swing with the Ghostly Touch at the same time. But something that they're going was an old tech for Dromai before it became a super redline version. So they're actually playing three Tome of Fiendles. Uh, being able to play Tome of Fiendle from Arsenal is super good. Obviously, uh, they are also the one of the new red Dromai decks playing the Tome of Imperial Flame. Something that is like really good about the Tome of Imperial Flame is getting the extra pitches and the extra resources. And... They've gone even a step further with putting that Tome of Fiendle back into the deck. Understanding the power level of this Tome it realizes that you can play six Tomes and just make your matchups with that Mage Master Boots even more consistent and even more powerful to get over these these humps that you need to, right? Um, Burn them all also, they are at two here. Uh, it usually is a discussion between one to three, depending on if they're playing Nourishing Emptiness or not. Uh, they've gone to two, not playing Nourishing Emptiness in this list, so you don't need to play the full three, but they're not just cutting it to one, they're keeping the two copies to have a little bit better of a Bravo matchup, plus uh, some other stuff. Then some regular stuff, you know, the contrabands for the mirror. They're playing. They're dedicating two dust of cro the chrome caverns as well. Got some more race faces in here as well, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I want to note the blues are two dust up and uh, one pursuit and three passing, so six blues in this list. Uh, going you know some regular stuff has two necrias in this list as well. Playing the full three themis and then playing one miraging metamorph, cutting down from. Sometimes I see this one to three as well. Uh, Rake Rabble is two sigils, two sand covers. Uh, usually sand covers are one to three. And then we have obviously two remembrance here in the board here. So some pretty spicy options here uh, and pretty teched for uh, at least a Bravo matchup and you know a generalization for like the mirror and stuff like that with the Necrias and the Cardavius. And then playing the spicy six tome list here uh to get this top eight here so let's look at this opponent because we are looking at a you know a dash deck 
in a Dormite Dash matchup, but Dash can be built in so many unique ways. So let's see how specifically uh, what Matt is cooking up for this weekend here. So we got the Norman gloves as well as the Serenator and a Visitronic. So he is looking at, you know, an EB4 setup, which is pretty interesting. Uh, probably sometimes I see this when they're really dedicated to uh, wanting to run EB3 at all times versus Ice Center, but they're more freely to being able to pop this Asili's Accelerator as well. And honestly, your arms kind of suck in, in mech, and he's actually going with the Tekko base arms and then an adaptive plating um, instead of what you usually see as a, you know, just like Goliath Gauntlet plus two, right? So he's looking at an adaptive plating in Tekko base arms, and you know, some of the normal current private is heart in starting pistol in pretty much every matchup, right? So look at it. There's some new considerations with the new set that came out. Uh, he is playing obviously the high octane max max V twin drive. He is looking like a more of like a mid range kind of boost deck. Something specifically that I want to note is that there is the Tekla base arms. So and he is playing Evo Steel Soul Controller, the arm the arm slot to put more six powers back into his deck. Something that is like specifically probably for this Dromay matchup is to be able to recycle these six powers in your deck because adaptive plating and Northern Goops really ain't doing anything versus this Dromai, but this is a pretty cool concept to see that this tech of the Teclo base arms into this Evo Steel, so which is just like literally a blue, right? It's like there's really not much you have to give up to just play this blue in the blue slot because, like, honestly, not really going to be boosting uh, with your blues a lot unless it's like the main one, T Bone 0 to 60. So, and it's playing obviously triple pounder, triple core here. Something that I want to note that is pretty specific is that uh, with the three backup protocol reds, which are just insanely good card in OG Dash now, especially because you can spark your genius for it and crank it and get the action back and draw the card spark, which is really, really good. Um, so then he's playing, is like, he's playing three payloads, three throttles, three max Vs, and then he's playing one gas guzzler, one rev up, and one big bertha, right? So you're really like, oh, well, why is he just playing three different of these boost, uh, like, pop cards? Something that you can do is that something that i did here on this weekend was that people that played against him was that they thought he had a lot more poppers in his list specifically uh than he actually did right so instead of just playing like three throttle three payload and then just like say three big bertha and three max v's and you're you you know you play a throttle you pay payload maybe a bit max v and then you pop with like the, the your fourth one they're like okay you have 12 uh you have like 12 poppers right this gives an illusion that you'd be running like utmost of 18 uh which is very uh they have to play very uniquely right around that uh which is a pretty interesting uh tech right here it gives you a little bit of bluff because you like, say you you know say you pop with you know rev up and then you play a big bertha uh on like a following turn and then they're like oh shit okay this guy's playing like uh, a lot of a lot of sixes that you don't really expect to be playing and that you can really catch people off guard and they have to represent you having uh, it, the respect you having a six power a lot more and they can save you a lot of value. Something that in this matchup that I, I is pretty important is to not get run over uh, on either side, right? Is sometimes the dash will just try to boost into the Dromai if they give him space and this Dromai you want to set up this board then that they have to kill and so they don't uh and you don't give them much space back so also to note there's a lot of zero power boost cards in this deck uh uh basically the three spot rapids three expedites in all these zero to 60s uh and he is looking as just an induction chamber uh kind of guy here there's no there's not even a plasma purifier either it's just two induction chambers so we are just fully on that mi more mid-range boost plan instead of getting a uh with no no defensive reactions or anything like that we are trying to kill your opponent uh pretty much every game in like through attacks instead of through that pistol plan late game so let's get into it here uh and let's see how this matchup goes a little bit here uh and we're looking at this so looking at the starts so he is going with that techlo base arms here so he will have the opportunity to uh put the six powers back into his deck if he draws the the blue evil soul and he has time to uh aaron 
I believe was the higher seed going into this and he's choosing to go first something that uh Joel Mai really really wants to do is because you have that gold token now because of the crown just getting that ash start is just an insane amount of ash that you can get throughout the game you don't have to really think about it much anymore because of just red tome uh Joel Mai significantly has gotten easier as a deck to be playing than like past metas because you don't have to think about ash generation like nearly as much as you used to before when you had you know like 15 some blues in your deck this is going to be uh a lot a lot easier uh i'll say so gets a uh, pops of ash plays a sigil on turn zero which is always an incredible amount of value see if he plays a dragon or not uh or just pitches the flame skill in in uh passes here yep all right pitches a flame skill just trying to get a lot of these cards out because he knows he's gonna have to block some things from matthew this turn uh matthew also some of the early game is like because you're not trying to get run over too too much depending on the start from dash uh you will you will see like uh either the drumite or the dash deck uh get some cheeky damage through with the pistols or be able to clear a lot of these dragons really effectively right um so had he, he he did have the arms, but he's gonna pitch it because obviously he does not have a uh, a six power yet because it's too, it's pretty early into the game. But we're looking at a red red zipper hit, and then he is uh, boosting a rate a red zero to sixty. That is also something I want to uh, take a note of to see how many uh, red cards he does boost specifically because sometimes this matchup can go to fatigue a little bit and the threat density always matters right especially if he's boosting a lot of these six powers away you really need to get bailed out by these six powers uh a lot of the time in like the middle to the end game to get that that value because drama is such a powerful deck right now and dash really doesn't have any on hits you can't really interact with them more than just having uh, poppers at specific areas so you need to really have those poppers line up correctly so you can play these three four card hands if you have an arsenal uh to really you know put drama on the back foot or Dromai having to take damage to be able to prevent a lot of things this is pretty good here for matt uh, it does boost away a pounder, which sucks. Uh, did start with a chamber because you had to start with a chamber versus Dromai specifically to clear those dragons, and not the not, not just pound town here. But it just goes one for five, one for five, right? Just super efficient, great uh, time here. Loads the pistol. Let's see if he shoots with the pistol. Um, he does shoot. He's going to shoot with the pistol here. So twelve damage. Three card. Three card. Twelve damage. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, and is there, a, is there an arsenal that last card here? So, Aaron does just take 12, right? So he does not have him blocking this turn. So, let's see if he has, you know, the namesake of the deck basically now is going to be that red tome. Let's see if he has red tome here or uh, if it can snowball any of these big dragons out here. So, it does have red tome, which is going to be an incredible start here. Uh, obviously, if he's keeping red tome. He's going to be pitching uh, two red cards here, going up to five Ash, which is now you don't have to think about Ash for, you know, basically the entire game. Uh, that one of Miraging is going to be in that, uh, in the bottom of the deck as well. So we won't be seeing that too much. And then he's pitching a Themai. Themai doesn't really have a lot of text in this specific matchup, but is a big body. Three for four. Uh, does take two pistol shots to kill. So that is something. Okay, so as an Asvali in his arsenal here. I will say, I hate that they made them put Ash tokens under all these dragons. Like, uh, every time they play, like, Dromai plays dragons, it's, like, it's just like the most, like, unintuitive, uh, <laughs> and, like, I understand why, but it's like, bro, nobody, nobody actually plays like that. Like, don't, it makes no sense to do it on camera, right? Uh, Tomi, oh my god, he just has, the four costs already and hits the red on top because the deck is mostly only see uh yep there's just one six power boom takes it this is the this is a really good start by Aaron, right 
uh, being able to play is double dragon, knows they're not going to get popped. Basically, almost a, f a free four damage because Matthew has to be. He basically has to kill these dragons in the pack, and he has he has double blue, yellow in hand, right? So, I mean, I guess he can block with one card, and then he can like zero sixty boost into uh, the, the Asvali, and then double pistol shot the Dominion. I think it's Dominia, right? I, I believe so. And so, and he only has those two dragons too. So Aaron uh, is going to have this five card hand, uh, at least a four or five card hand in the following turn as well. Does take a lot of damage on that first turn, but immediately swings back seven damage and creates uh, two permanents in those dragons, which basically means that he didn't really take any damage uh, because he does have to clear, you know, a three and a four health. Uh, dragon so he's basically plus seven so he's at 40. that's like something that i think people forget is that every time you play these dragons it's not only like the attack value but if your opponent sends damage no matter if it's like the damage would be pointless because you would just block with the card but that you're also still blocking with the card right so it is going to be you know all right so i'm gonna target the the big one here so he's just gonna kill it i believe that's a blue throttle so he had a pretty heavy blue start but that is something that i'll say is like every single time that you have to put an attack at a dragon even if you would just be taking like a single one one card block you're still making your opponent's hand uh like more efficient even if they have extra cards like they, they can just arsenal or you know pitch to extra things or you know play some weirdly weird lines or maybe a little more efficient land lines because they're not uh it, they're not they're not just gonna like give up a random attack that's something like you have to see like he just went four, four boosts three boosts like Aaron had to block either of them so he just doesn't have to care to take seven damage randomly if he wants to bring cards back like the dragons are so efficient um and they're basically parity of damage uh like life total kind of damage when you first play them but if they get a swing twice dude it is so much value uh permanents in this game are fucked up i'll say that at the very least so uh let's see where it goes matt does get a cheeky pistol shot at drone by and then he gets to arsenal so oh and he has a Reiko end bridge right here this is going to be one of those cards that are can break the matchup pretty easily ash wings are going to be pretty hard for matt to clear out and this is how you get an amazing amount of uh an amazing amount of damage turn after turn here damn it gets four ash wings here Let's see if matt has a popper for any of these if not or he's just gonna take the four here isn't swinging ubia oh does swing ubia i don't think it matters uh because your opponent's gonna take this four, like surely they don't have a popper, so swinging the Ubia is perfectly fine, and then you're gonna retain that arsenal here as well, and not play it. He also had burn the ball and a defensive reaction, so that hand was pretty set up to block a decent amount. Uh, we did know we had the Ubia on top because of the Dominia from the, from the previous turn as well, but drawing a defensive reaction when you basically your opponent's clearing and you're gonna be on the front foot for that that game is pretty. It's pretty rough here, so. But a pretty decent board here. You got four Ash Wings and an Ubia. He's sending the 0 60 at Aaron. So this is something that, uh, like, sometimes you saw Merrick do uh, in, you know, the top eight of the. Uh, uh, when he made his run for the top eight of the calling in Baltimore when Lexi was still meta and he played against multiple, like, Dromais, he did have to just increasingly go face against the dromize to have the dromize uh have to respect it right like a lot of the time uh you you need the dromize to be blocking because if if they're blocking they're not playing these additional permanents or they're not allowing their entire team to swing uh off of uh you know a two card red hand right and you can chip in that damage uh maybe clear some dragons to the back end it's because like if aaron just like double blocks here right uh, a play that Matthew can make is he just load the pistols uh, and like double kill Ash Wings or kill an Uvia, something like that, right? And then 
that's how he he needs to be playing it to where he's gonna send uh stuff face Aaron needs to be blocking so he doesn't fall too too behind on all of these uh permanents but still being able to clear it with the pistol being able to present all this damage eventually throughout the game as well and then have the six powers bail him out when he needs to turn the corner a lot uh this would be really good if he has specifically a max velocity here uh he's looking at the expedite blue in his arsenal which is pretty ass but like uh he has had to play two blue boost cards from his arsenal this game so has been uh drawing in a couple additional blues i forgot to see what the exact blue count was before we got into this game but just having a little unlucky from the mat side so you don't really want to see a lot of these blues here it'd be very good if he had a max v right here it would almost uh catch him up almost fully in this game because we're looking at about like 10 health on the board okay so he doesn't have it uh well he still might have it but it looks uh like he doesn't have a lot going on got the extra pistol and then now has the two coding so he still has okay he does have the max v but he values uh I said it was double uvia so he was always gonna block here sand was pretty bad necria double uvia in a defense reaction so it was a blocking again so not bad for Aaron too too much but it does take a decent amount this turn uh it goes to 25 to 28 so Matt is calling his way back in uh looks like he has double uh double like the the red get back card I forgot uh, why am I forgetting it right now and then a six and a blue so but now Aaron only does have one ash here because he did have to use it he banked in a lot of his ash for this Ubia making a whole lot of ash wings and that rake the embers so that is something that you have to look forward to as well right so let's see no armor blocks on either side as well we're just trying to trade damage here this also doesn't have Gogan currently unless Aaron has you know i think the only one he could have is like another sigil but he already played one sigil specifically so he does still have that second one we're looking at his banish down there's double high octane as well that is missing from from that side Does just take the one. Let's see, let's see. Let's see what Matt does on this specific turn here. And a zero to sixty red. Push away a blue T bone off to the top here. It's only four at air. Aaron has had that Arsenal card a couple of turns here. Uh, it could have been uniquely a couple of things. Might be maybe like a tunnel tie uh, because. Couldn't be a ravenous travel because he would have played this this, or this previous turn to get his entire team to go again it's not a defensive reaction or he probably would have played it um it could be a yellow tome i could definitely see it being a yellow tome maybe another additionally maybe not a red tome uh because he probably would have got greet he, he might have gotten greedy okay so it's not a tome tie either because he's blocking with the tome tie here i wonder what that card in his arsenal is going to be he's probably not boarding in remembrance because he doesn't probably think it's going to go that late because matt is primarily a boost deck so he is not going to have the the quantity of cards later into the game so maybe it is that yellow tome that they can play you do want to put that yellow tome pretty much off of a blue uh, so you can have like the, the additional cards to play 
He's yet to play one for the boots, then one for that home from Arsenal. So you want to get in the life as well. Matt's in an interesting spot. I know he has a decently weak hand here, it looks like. So we... I don't activate... Okay, so he's pitching the red. He needs additional resources, right? Uh, it looks like a max V and a pulse wave. Not the best for Matt either because he wants to have you know enough max V's left in his deck. Quantity of damage is going down, but it looks like we have pistol. Let's see if he's going face. Or he has dragons here. Okay, he's going face. He's asking if Aaron has a reaction here. Looks like he has another backup protocol, and then looks like the rev, the red rev up. So just another, another popper here. Aaron only blocking with one card so far, so it still has a three card hand plus the arsenal. So he's just coming in with the backup protocol. He's just playing backup protocol red, cranks it, and then shoots with the pistol as well. And then Arsenal is the, the six power. That was something that I, I I was wondering if he was going to do if he was just not, if he was normal Arsenal this backup protocol, and then block with like the six power red to pop one of the dragons, to not take a, a large amount of damage. But let's see. I can remember to breathe, or I'm gonna yawn a lot. This video, I keep doing that, I keep talking over myself. As you can see in the background, <laughs> one of the casters grabbing something behind Aaron. I was. That's always really funny when you watch them. Uh, if you ever need to do the big thing, and you just immediately see somebody walking behind. <laughs> All right, so looking at Chroma here. This is going to be another way that he can play a yellow tome without having to use that mage master boots in his arsenal specifically if i don't know if he's brought it in this matchup um i don't know if he would uh or not he is going to use his backup protocol here pitching for it surely he's going to get a like a max v or a popper yeah get some max v as a popper here to block kill that chromite the chromite just gets too much damage Aaron, such a meticulous player as well. Looking pretty good here. And he's in the board state. Doesn't want to use these cards in his hand specifically because if he just sends an Ashwing here, so if he just sends an Ashwing and it leaves two cards in his hand he could only just flame skill one of them away he really wants to use the value that he has with his hand he's getting a pretty good turn okay pit does pitch to furnace because he doesn't have any ash so he's gonna make the as fly here Interesting. I wonder what other play Aaron had this turn because he did play the Chromai first, right? So he played Cro he, he didn't play the. He could have played Moragi and Chromai on the same turn, and then made it so the Chromai didn't have Phantasm, and then he could just swing with the Ash Wings instead. Huh. 
But Syrinx is everything, even the Mirage at the end too, because he uh, manages, you know, taking everything, so he kind of just has a free roll of uh, doing this. This is the thing, is that if you don't, if you don't clear these like tiny ash rings, they get a lot, a lot of value throughout this game, right? And that is something that like Dromi is really, really good uh, at doing. Like, this Uvia's value this game is just actually insane. Um, Aaron does need to find, like, a red tome, like, pretty soon to get that, get Ash, right? Because he is at zero Ash, and that red tome is not going to allow him to cheat that Ash back out. So he has to be super, super conscious about Ash economy, because he has zero currently. Um, especially because that Uvia won't get additional Ash Wings as well. So, we'll see. Matt's going to start with this rev up. Boosting, so again. Man has boosted away a decent amount of a mixture of blues and reds, but decent amount of power cards like high octanes have left the left the game basically. So I wonder how many cards Matthew did present this game as well. Let's see if he went over sixty, uh, because he knew he was going to be boosting a lot, and maybe he thought maybe a strategy from air inside would just be full bulking a lot of the time. Um, which is pretty, which is pretty fine strategy. Matt can squeak in a lot of weird damage because of pistol shots. So fatiguing is pretty hard against Dash. Dash is really good at fatiguing people uh, as well. As you can see, like the East End's uh, game. Later on in this top eight, he's playing a dedicated fatigue Dash, which is always a very interesting deck to play uh but he does have a bad matchup in quarters and five here so let is even but matt is down a lot of uh a lot of permanents here he's playing the spark of genius for zero getting back a red puzzle red maybe cranks and then he still gets the action point, and he's gonna draw the card for the Spark of Genius, which is really good. And giving a look at what he has in that, uh, in that graveyard specifically. So let's see, let's see. Potentially big draw off the Spark of Genius here. Spark of Genius with like the new item cards are just so good, right? Like that card was, you know, depend. Like there's so many different like dash builds out there and you just see like the dash has evolved so much throughout the years and it's really interesting to see dash is just like such an interesting deck and such a classic deck as well i know a lot of people i know if it actually won it was like plus 300 it would have been at like i think it was like some somebody said it was like gonna be like nine something because that like six something right now the l leaderboards and it's like crazy to think that like dash was in like the second set and hasn't rotated yet but has always been like it's always i've always said that like dash is just one like random it's just one random events when you like you just don't think dash is like good and then it just wins or top eights or something like that. I remember at like uh, the calling in. No, no, the yeah, it was the calling in Baltimore. Like that was attached to the PT. I wonder. I, I don't remember if Dash won that event or it, it top eighted. And I remember looking at it and I was like, how did the Dash make it to top eight or or win it? And I don't know, man. Like I see the Oldham matchup was pretty good back then, and Oldham was still legal. Uh, and that was used to be one of your really good matchups as. Well, I actually thought Oldham was a tough matchup for a dash, unless they were playing, like, dedicated, like, long-form pistol plan in, like, the side, which is a lot of, uh, it's a lot of slots, right? Like, the, the amount of induction chambers and the amount of, like, other things. So it looks like Matt keeps having all these, uh, these blues in his hand, so he's gonna cash in that break lane. So he doesn't have it for the, the the next turn that to get a uh to get
get a six power. Matt's getting a, drawing a lot of those blues. Okay, it is did, did draw a popper, so but this Okay, here we go. We see this uh Mage Master Boots. This is something that also will get him a decent amount of ash because he's gonna need to use, you know, two reds. And it has been a yellow tome in his arsenal the entire time as well. Was trying to set that up for a long time. Is pitching away a Rake the Embers, which is not that good right now because of his low ash economy. So it's pretty good. Does get to draw and gain three life, I believe. Looks like a Chromai here. Chromai giving an extra action point as well. Now, even through one popper, he's still going to be able to swing like five to six, five of these five ash wings and this Uvia. We know that Matt has one popper in his hand. If you can look at that gas guzzler, he is only playing that one red copy, so he has one one popper in his hand. No, he has va max V in his arsenal. This is kind of strong. It's going to be a little stranded unless he, you know, draws a hand that allows him to, you know, play it out as well. But he has so many, so many permits from Aaron's side. He's going to take a lot of damage to be able to play that here. So we're at a pretty even, like, even game here at 2119. But I would give the advantage over to Aaron specifically moving forward as well. All right, you're back. Uh, had a little intrusion uh, in here. So Aaron has a hook. Oh, okay, so yeah, draws the second uh, yellow tome as well. And because he has two action points here, uh, pitches the red to draw the additional two cards. Doesn't get any life, but basically it's to reset his two card hand that was a uh, favor scene and another tome, which is pretty useless in his hand. Um, so it gets to make additional ash with which the red uh, helping his ash economy coming up as well going back to two ash still doesn't use flame skill furnace as well can't technically play a four cost if but uh, he already played his only four cost in the deck at the very beginning as well Oh, something interesting here as well because he did have that one popper chose to not pop the chromite but because he didn't pop the chromite he did, and then played the yellow tone after to get what are they looking they're looking at ash oh were they checking if he did play a red card because he put the chromite this turn Okay, I don't know what they're checking there, but that was interesting because he played the second uh, yellow tome uh, to take up one of those chromite action points. He actually didn't get to swing all the the ash rings basically for free because he could just pop one of them from Matt's side. So got bailed out a little bit here. Still needs to deal with this chromite. He has so he has three cards in his hand plus the one card in his arsenal. Doesn't need to uh, hit this chromite, but does have the combustible carrier. Uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it just says if it hits. So killing that Chromite. So it, the next thing is going to get plus three. That is pretty interesting tech uh, from Matt's side. I didn't really think about that when I originally saw on the list. But I guess, yeah, when you clear, when you are clearing these dragons here, you can just go two go again into one of them and then get that additional plus three onto the next one. So it's like you're clearing your dragon and getting additional uh head jab at your opponent so this expedite is coming in for six now and then he still has a pistol swing as well now aaron doesn't have that chromai let's see how much aaron blocks here specifically because there's still a card in his arsenal which we know is max v so he can't play that this turn uh but he just has one resource for the teclo for the pistol, I wonder if he would heart this turn to get two resources to put it on 
the chamber and the pistol so he could uh, have that cham chamber for a following turn because he hasn't had a lot of F leftover resources to like load the induction and load the pistol. He had one extra floating uh, on one turn I believe and he uh, didn't load something. Okay, so boost and hits double item here. So he is just going to put one on the, the chamber and the pistol. Then, yeah, he's not he he's not hitting these ash wings at all. He's just pistoling the the face for the additional damage, which is pretty which is interesting. Obviously, like your opponent has an Uvia in play to rate this game, and then now he's back at three. He he gains some ash economy back. He's at three ash, so killing an ash wing doesn't probably doesn't matter too too much. But oh, doesn't doesn't use ash, but has a red has red tome here it's the second red tome so second red tome and we've seen we've seen two yellow and two red tomes so far so this like basically every tome that you you draw and play is going to use so close to another tome that you're basically get to play a tome almost every single turn basically so it is quite good that is pretty good All right, taking a look at what Matt has played, probably counting the amount of poppers he still has left uh, in his deck, because these, like, I'm pretty sure they got they were able to see the deck list before uh, top eight, surely. Uh, so he probably have a whole night to prepare, knows the numbers, uh, and prepared through this definitely with his team as well, which is always like quite interesting. Uh, I think like the preparation that you have before like these major like top eights for like the quarterfinal matchup specifically is like really really cool to see uh, because when the information is known it's really just how it's played and what strategy you can come up to specifically be uh, the next thing. So we got Miragi here that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if he has oh and he has the Kyloria. Carlory is really good. Always, always in a threat in taking this induction chamber. So you do have to pop it, block it in some type of way. Probably going to see a one card block plus a maybe just like double equipment or one card block plus some equipment here. This is gonna be a, this is a powerful turn from from Aaron. Obviously, like red red tome turns are just increasingly powerful. Uh, and a lot. And this is just like you just see like he used to play Moragi. Kyloria and could play an additional dragon and swing all these dragons on the same turn. So he is going to block with both of these uh, equipment here, the, the tackle and uh, the helmet. So box number four, pretty much always have to uh, block this Kyloria. And then, oh, and we have a Chromai? Oh, dude. No matter what, he's taking all these Ash Wings this turn, because unless he has specifically double popper, which does not look like he does have. This is where Aaron can be might be running away with the game specifically. Was in a decently, I would say, paper position for Aaron, but now we're looking at incredible, incredible amount of uh, favor here. Matt is taking it here, so maybe he is uh, keeping basically his five card hand. My poor Ashwoods as well. Let's see how much damage Matthew does take here. Let's see if he wants to block any of them. Just unlock the Chrome Eye, so the regular uh, one. We'll probably swing both this Uvia and Moragia here, because like you wouldn't keep. You wouldn't keep the popper for the Moragi all the way to the Moragi, right? Yeah, there's no way. Even though he has two action points, so you, but it would just be blocking three, so. Matt, all the way down to six here. Favorite part of the game is watching uh, 
the incredible amount of work that you have to do after playing Eternal Troll. <laughs> Flipping cards, uh, moving them away from tilted, moving your board states is more clear. Dude, I that's like my favorite thing about Dromai is like, you just have like so many things going on. And uh, I remember I, I love watching like new players try to develop, like to, to play to play Dromai and you're just like, dude, it is just so hard. <laughs> Cause it's just the amount of, uh, the amount of cards and everything that's going around is just like so immense. Looks like a good clearing turn though from map so we do have the the pistol being able to probably take out both of the the chromite and the kyloria it has the zero to 60 to be able to take out the, the moragi here does have to ha, did have to drop down all the way to six to be able to like actually anti-clear so it does have a twin drive here uh as well is it a boost twice uh so it has boosted three times if he does have an like any card basically with Teclo allows him to play that max uh, V from his arsenal here. A blue would allow him to uh, load both the chamber and the pistol and then use Teclo to uh, coming with 10 as well. So we're box with the, the furnace here because if you want to, uh, you might be able to get that additional one block here as well. So just have another blue in his hand. Um, decides not to break the chain here for the uh, to give him your, his opponent back the furnace to just attack for, for ten. Leaving the Kyloria out for now, he could uh, use his boots to obviously come in with the pistol right after. But so he's just in a block for three, so he's going to take seven here, going down to ten. This is what Matt needed to come back into the game, uh, specifically. Okay, so is going to use his boots here. Uh, let's see if he just uses, uh, obviously, I uh, would theoretically be saving the one damage from the, the flame skill furnace because he didn't, uh, load first. Let's see if he uses the tech low, if he wants to banish two more cards. We have gone through a decent amount of cards here. Oh, hits another max V that's on top, uh, which is another popper specifically, uh, to be able to stop this turn, then this next turn of like just like Uvia and some Ashwings. So your opponent is going to have, uh, does have two cards in his hand, so surely he just has like a red to play uh, to be able to attack everything. It's going to kill the Clyoria. That's pretty standard, and gets to leave that in induction chamber as well. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, looks as a backup protocol draws the third max V in his hand as well. Has at least one blue uh, because he has a core. See, okay, does make an ash wing here. This is going to one ash. Okay, has another Kyloria. So yeah, the Yendere Kyloria here. So didn't need to take uh, some amount of damage to get in there. But that is something here that we'll see is that. This is how the dash can crawl back into the game. He you know draws a popper every turn. You know has the the red the red one that he can the red item he can play in the next turn. So he never so he has a popper for the following turn. Like this is where you can start getting uh, really frisky here as the dash opponent, especially at this life total of ten to six. You if you're playing the three card hand, and you're popping the first thing that your opponent does. If your opponent doesn't draw one of those, uh, you know, non dragon starters and just swinging the dragons especially because your opponent has used i think double maragi and double chromai this game as well uh that is something to look out for okay has this a combustible i know he has a teclo core as well in his hand so it's not like he's gonna put an incredible amount of like damage towards his opponent this turn if he wants to keep that uh backup protocol uh for the falling turn for a popper here because your opponent does have four Ashwings here. So four Ashwings plus Uvia, so that's five, and you're at six. So you're pretty much dead uh, if they ever get to swing. I think you have... You, obviously, it's like five damage. He's at six, plus he has the, the two one box on the on the bottom there. So he has, theoretically, two turns. But uh, once you're at one, 
if you're like keeping one rabble and then you have to block the rabble and you have to block it, and then you have to have the popper for the ash wings and you're playing a two card hand you're, it's a little less a little less good here okay so he gets to play this he's cranking it and he's gonna play the core okay this is where he can start he can technically start cheating cards now because he does have the tech low core and this backup protocol red so you can use basically any yellow or blue to crack the backup protocol to to pop next turn and then he does have the tech low core as additional two resources which also acts like basically a card uh uniquely chance is using his last ash here to become there oh he's a red tome okay <laughs> it does not matter uh yeah so he just has the four card hand uh with the red tome that's gonna be the third red tome in his deck so he's used three red tomes and two yellow tomes specifically um chance giving it a thought here he knows there's gonna be at least one popper from his opponent because there is the backup protocol red um so if he doesn't have a moragi specifically or a chroma he want he might want to keep the some actually generic attacks possibly because you know the first that that ash ring is getting popped there's no way no way they were allowed you to swing five ash rings plus the uvia so six ash rings basically because you're never killing uvia aaron has a dance with this ash uh having ash having not having ash this game going from zero to ash to three ash uh had six ash at one point in this game so they answered pretty perfectly i'll say did did bring in the race face okay um i was pretty sure that is for you know the mirror and this matchup specifically so and we have okay has the rebel sees his hand cover on top as well so he has a little bit of additional protection on top that we'll see See what Matt does. This is generic, like just four damage coming at him, so he can't pop it. So you do need to to block some of it, you know. This is an interesting spot. Not a good spot for Matt as all. He's been playing pretty behind most of this game the start that Aaron had was pretty good but just how the draws have gone this is this is how this matchup feels to me a lot of the time uh I'll say that I know um a lot of people will just say and say that OG Dash is quite mid at times just because it is it's definitely a numbers deck and decks like Dromai break a lot of numbers Let's see. He has a burden mall as well. Uniquely, Matt pops his pops his boots. This burden mall is a win condition. Uh because this burden mall will kill Matt in five turns. Uh in four in, in four more turns, right? And he has the amount of ash wings just to swing. So Aaron's basically saying, I have them all. I have enough red cards to keep it around for the next four turns. I can full block and just swing with an Ash Wing every single turn unless you fucking kill me. Uh, so, Matt has some work cut out for him here. Because um, he, he does need to pop this, right? Like, he either has to have a popper in hand or he has to use the backup protocol red. Here, okay, has a popper in hand. Then does he want to use his backup protocol red? He can get any uh, attack basically. Let's see.
So he has a spark of genius, he has a a tackle cord hand. Yeah, you just have a sp he has spark and tackle core. Okay, grabs a red zipper. coming down to the wire here especially because like the these cards are very very uniquely positioned here so he's gonna come with the pistols first so he's gonna come in for two and then give it go again so he can't crawl his way back into this game very slightly he does pretty much have to hope to draw a popper in the next couple hands uh to attempt to make this comeback here uh to be able to not like just instantly die, right? Because if if Matt's next four cards, like or four or five cards, are not a popper, he just loses the game on the spot, right? So you do need to hopefully draw the popper and then play a functional like two to three card hand, basically every single turn. He does have that core to to assist him a little bit, so he does have a. Hmm, I was gonna say that he. His last card is Spark of Genius, I believe, if I saw his hand correctly when he was moving. Um, double pistol shot. So much value here. Let's see what else. Because you could play Spark to get another Tackle Core out of your deck and then Arsenal that the last card. Like, no matter what it is, just try to get that value here. Because you can boost for 1 for 5, load pistol, play Spark. Is probably your best option here, but you're really hoping, you know. Okay, boost a non six power away. Pretty good for him. Now, chance is thinking gear, right? Five from the sipper hit take him down to three and then if he loads and shoots his pistol he would go to one it's not lethal obviously it's not lethal Let's see if we got going here okay it does have that sand cover that we knew from the rabble right so it's gonna take that one See what else we got here. Okay, so I'm gonna use tech low. Okay, it doesn't hit a six power. I wonder how many cards he has left. If you were close to second cycle or not. It's like one thing that is a little see what's the induction and the pistol is no spark of genius here. Then the core an additional card this is specifically where backup protocol red is not a six power either if he has any more left in his deck I don't really remember too too much here and checking the popper he did uh, boost a couple of them away I believe at least one max V is boosted away. We've seen another two from Matt as well. Yeah, how crazy is this game that Matt played two max V turns and it still has felt uh, super, not super Aaron favored, but a decent, decently favored from Aaron's side as well. Uh, I think he still has some uh, P 
payloads left, if I remember correctly. Should have some payloads. It's my hand. All right, Necker right here. Swings night crew. Does Matt have a popper? Does Matt have a popper? If not, this game is over. Aaron anticipating winning scene. Is there a way for Matt to live through this turn? There's no, no, there's not, right? Okay, is this on block four? And then has five Kadachis here. He can block one of them with the the arms. So there's four Kadachis left at three. He needs to block an additional two. Technically can double block here and see. So it's on board right now. He can block this. Block one more from card in hand. One from the armor. Take two. Go to one. There's no block with the, the arms here. see. I mean, technically you just full block with his entire hand because he has two tackle cores, right? So he has four additional, he has four resources. So you can play whatever's in his arsenal and do the like, pistol shenanigans. So isn't a pot, isn't a block. Go to, we go to two. Oh, they're trying to put the, the minus one counter on that area because the bring them all trigger. Swings Uvia, but it does have the dust up. It does kill a mat. Oh man, what a what a top eight game. Really just showing how this matchup kind of rolls out too, right? Like I I would say this matchup is a drew my favorite matchup as well and if you don't have like the increasingly powerful uh like boost turns matt really isn't playing any items as well to get him over for like the value side as well i know that uh, we've seen dashes in the past uh play additional the plasma purifiers and have try to have these huge huge high octane like turns to get there uh matt boosted away two high octanes really early and didn't see the third one either to have like an incredible pit, like pistol like like four shot pistol uh, turn as well. But did have two max V turns, but it was still enough. Uh, Aaron still had a decent lead at the beginning. Could block out on there. So congrats to Aaron for making top four here uh, and showing here. But I'll see you guys in the next uh, top eight breakdown of the quarters, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.